Run away! Run away! Hi, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here, and today's video is a species profile of an isopod that flees at the slightest provocation. Cubaris, or possibly Nezodilo, species red tiger. While this native of Southeast Asia was originally considered a Cubaris species, some now place it in the genus Nezodilo, and in the future it may well end up being placed in a different genus altogether. Time will tell. I do think red tiger is a fairly appropriate and descriptive name for this species with these gorgeous markings. The patterns are quite variable from one individual to another. Most sources say that they reach a size of up to about 18 millimeters, and red tigers are capable of conglobation. As far as I know, there are no selectively bred morphs of this species, but a locality called the Fee Fun Tiger, which according to the isopod farm is larger and glossier, does exist. It's likely that at least some of the stock in the hobby is a mix of different localities, and in fact I suspect that is the case with my colony. I'm also starting to see some individuals pop up in my colony that are much lighter in color overall with fewer markings. If they keep showing up, I may try to isolate some of them to see if anything comes of it. Red tigers are on the somewhat prolific side for Cubaris, when they decide to breed that is. They've always bred fairly steadily for me, but I hear that they are unwilling to produce well for some people. While broods in my colony are frequent, they do seem to be of small to moderate size. In a moment, we'll talk about care for red tigers, but first, I'm going to give a shout out to my patrons at patreon.com. I absolutely love to share what I have learned and continue to learn about the wonderful creatures of our planet, from axolotls to zebra pillbugs. Being a patron is one of the best ways to ensure that I can continue doing that. That's the main reason that I hope you consider pledging your support on Patreon, but there are perks for patrons too. To find out how to help, and to see what I offer to my patrons, just click on the link at the end of the video, or down in the description. Now, let's talk about care for Cubara species red tiger. If you're starting with somewhere between 10 and 20 individuals, a standard 6 quart bin is fine to start with. These are medium-sized isopods, but eventually, of course, you'll need to split the culture or use a larger enclosure. I provide a moisture gradient to my red tigers. They seem to like a reasonably damp substrate, but take care to avoid soaked substrate and a small dry area isn't a bad idea. This species doesn't seem to be much of a burrower, so you don't need to overdo it on substrate, but of course provide at least an inch of base substrate and you have the option to go deeper if you like. This species really seems to like bark flats. Provide lots of flat or slightly curved pieces of bark. Warren McMonagall, in his book Isopod Zoology, says that they seem to choose specific resting spots on the bark and return to them time after time. And though I can only offer anecdotal support, it does seem consistent with my experience. As is the general rule with isopods, make sure to offer plentiful leaf litter. My tigers get moderate ventilation. But, as always, ambient humidity and airflow in the room where you keep your isopods will influence the exact ventilation and watering regimen that you will need to provide. This species seems to do well at room temperatures, or slightly higher. I give my tigers the same foods that I provide to most of my isopods. They get leaf litter, of course, supreme isopod chow, fish food pellets, and then bits of veggies like raw sweet potato, green beans, various squashes, and so forth. I've never kept this species of isopod as a bioactive cleaner. That would be a somewhat expensive experiment, and while they are reasonably prolific for a Cubaris, they're not nearly as prolific as Panda Kings or Cubaris marina. If you've tried this species in a cleanup crew, I'd love to hear more about your experience down in the comments. So the reason that people keep red tigers as pet isopods are for their colors and patterns. They are absolutely stunning, but this is a fairly shy isopod species. When I lift up the bark they're hiding on, some individuals will take off running to the other side of the bark. The others will freeze for a short period and then take off running for the other side of the bark. I'd say that their flight response is more developed than that of most isopod species I work with, and they're pretty speedy little runners too. You may have noticed that much of the footage of this species in this video was taken in a small deli cup, and that's just because these flighty isopods are difficult to film for any length of time. I haven't tried keeping this species in a transparent display enclosure, nor have I kept them in extremely high densities, both of which can often result in isopods that are more visible. 
So that may be worth a try with this species. As far as price is concerned, red tigers are somewhat expensive, though not terribly difficult to find. So if you don't mind the price and the fact that they'll tend to make a break for it when disturbed, these are a unique option if you have some isopod experience under your belt. This video is part of a growing playlist of isopod species profiles. So if you haven't seen the rest of the playlist, be sure to check it out right here. And thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.